Hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> so, guys, I hope you are all good. Let me just make sure my display is all right. Okay. Mm, that's weird. Okay. Let me reset. Oh. All right, I guess set it up, you know. <laughs> All right, so today, let's see if you guys can see. Yeah, let me make sure everything is working. All right. like things are working fine nice all right so let's get started let me get it here yeah all right and a sec okay rogan josh all right thank you Live coding. Alright. All right. So for today, you'll be dabbling into concurrency uh, in Ruby programming language. If you don't know Ruby, I like Ruby overall. And uh, uh, the community is uh, stable. It's a contributor are uh, tirelessly working towards making Ruby uh, better. Now again, Ruby is an object-oriented programming language. So uh, Ruby, I mean, it's kind of the same thing as uh, the right tool for the job, right? Ruby is not suited for all kind of programming tasks. But sure, for uh, especially for web design, uh, Ruby is pretty good. Uh, nowadays, uh, especially with Ruby 3.0, 3.0.0, they have handled, the core team has handled concurrency really well. And they have added new ways uh, to you know, utilize the power of multi-core uh, processing through Ruby language. In Ruby 3.0.0, they also, uh, I think they also ha are using just-in-time compiler. Yeah, so it's pretty fast. It directly converts your code into machine language. So it's much, It's I think it's three times faster than your, uh, no, your normal compilation, which is, of course, better. And if you have Ruby application, you should upgrade it. All right. Okay. So uh, let's start Ruby. Actually, let, let us go to now again. This session is not a lot of like it's more kind of like pair programming rather than uh, instructional. And this is part one only. So we will be doing more next week on Sunday uh, if everything is all right we'll be doing more concurrent programming all right okay so okay. So let's uh, go to Ruby itself. All right, Ruby thread. Now, concurrency. Concurrency is, you know, normally when you write a program. So let's go to, let's open up a new terminal. So I use. I use 
pretty much integrated terminal which is provided in visual studio code so we just go and open a uh, ruby session if you don't know i mean actually let's say you are a beginner then on on your mac computer you can inst first of all you should install irb okay let's say see if we have a brew cask all right let's uh, go through some what are they saying So we do brew list. Let's actually let me move this here. Uh, I'm gonna move this guy over here. Maybe yeah. I'm the second desktop. Oops. <laughs> okay. Let me move it on this desktop. Yeah. And I'm gonna move my OBS. Of course, I'm using OBS. <laughs> And let me move my OBS studio to the third desktop and there we go. Let me make sure that this is over here and you guys can see it. And this guy, oh come on, is over here, maybe all the way over there. Alright, now we can get started. So. Brew list. Uh, I'm gonna do a grip, yeah, you know, to see if I have IRB installed. Well, it's only list formula, right? Brew list formula instead. Okay, brew help. That's good. Hey. So, brew upgrade. Let's see. I'm providing this some command, so I'm gonna just look it up. Brew help, or whenever you are stuck it's just you know you can just type this help flag or h flag and it should work so we have a brew search brew, brew info brew install on our brew info so brew info i'm trying to see if i installed it irb through okay there's no irb all right Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see the black blog post. Uh, homebrew. They are using homebrew. Uh, through. If you want to install Ruby, then you you can install through RBM. So RBM. All right. Don't go for RBM. It sucks. Alright, uh, RBM is much better, RBEMB is much better. So, yeah, you can brew in for RBEMB. Oops. Brew in for RBEMB. What? Ah, I have a typo. RBEMB, okay. So yeah, you can install brew. Uh, you can install your RB in RB RBN uh, by uh, doing brew install then RBM, and that would install RBM on your uh, computer. And then you can install IRB. IRB download. Download Ruby. All right. Uh, yeah, this is better. I think. So this this is the way to install Ruby, right? So RBM first the first step. Let's let, 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 before starting this video. If you are new to Ruby, then this is for you. This stage. 
but uh, if you are if you already have you know Ruby installed, then it's all good. So first step: install RBM. Don't use RBM. RBM. Don't use that. It's it sucks. RBM much better. Install Ruby 3.0.0. All right. So let's uh, see what's our local. RBM has a command local. Okay, for this directory there has been no uh, uh, Ruby version for this particular. Also, RBM creates a scope, and in its scope, it, in its project, it install its own Ruby uh, version. So let me move to my projects. And then I will create a directory Ruby concurrency. All right, and then I can actually go here and let's go for the older command RBM local. All right, so by default, it's 2.5.1. All right, I want RBM to change i want the ruby version not to be 2.5.1 i want the ruby version to be 3.0.0 although 2.5.1 is like really old and so let's do rbn help again rbn global uh, rbn global system all right rbn 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 local rbm version okay rbm rbm shell local commands global Sh show the current ruby version and list install okay that's rbm rbm versions if we do that so on the system we have all these ruby installed we also have 3.0.0 sometime uh, you know, sometimes RBM has not updated the current version, so you should do uh, RBM. You have to first of all install the Ruby in your local, and then let RBM find it by doing RBM version. Uh, all right. So you can do RBM install. All right. If you don't have Ruby 3.0.0, then you can do RBM install. I've installed it, but all right, it will reinstall. It's okay. So let this reinstall. You must be wondering why am I talking about RBM? Well, again, this uh, phase is more for beginners, like who have never really uh, coded in Ruby and this video is going to be in Ruby. We are exploring Ruby concurrency. The reason why I like Ruby is because it's much simpler in syntax, easy to write, fast to build. And you know, nowadays as they're improving the compilation power, they're improving compilation algorithm. Uh, Ruby is becoming better and better. So if you see, if you want to see, you know, uh, Ruby, 3.0.0 you go to ruby lang and yeah there are a few features here they on 25th of December oh on Christmas they launched ruby so Matt's uh, I met Matt's in a ruby conference it was cool so uh, compared to ruby 2.0 uh, with JIT compiler we have not three times compilation time Let's see. By default, RBM uses GIT compiler. No, GIT 3.0.0. Uh, okay. No, I don't want to watch someone else's blog. 
it's always better to follow documentation rather than someone else's blog and sure you should follow you should read blogs but always kind of make sure with the documentation because you know everyone is learning uh, but only those who have created the 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 particular tech or the particular language or framework they know best right all right so I mean, I know I'm going a bit tangentially, but yeah, I do want to use the most power when it comes to, you know, JIT. But it's taking a very long time. I already have it installed, so maybe I'm just gonna, I'm cancel, I'm gonna cancel it. But yeah, you can install with this command, so we don't waste our time at all. You know. BM local, all right. Let us set it to 3.0.0. .0. All right, cool. So now, IRB. Okay. If you have Ruby set up, I think if you have Ruby set up with uh, an install in your system, you can access IRB. Although I have to, I have to recheck myself on that. I, I don't. I think I can. Yeah, integrated Ruby build. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think yeah. When you install with Ru install Ruby in your system with RBM, after installing, you can use IRB if you type IRB. I don't think you have to necessarily install it like through Brew or something. But I might be wrong about it. Uh, yeah, so let's. Uh, you can try it on your end if it doesn't work. Let me know. I will. I know that okay. I know that I missed something. All right, so let's get started with multi-threading now. All right, I mean concurrency now. All right, so let us write a program. Also. You might be saying, why I'm not using online, you know, like, why can't I use online IRB, you know, like, IRB like this online, so. So a site which I use is REPL, REPL.IT. Rep, you can go here and uh, yeah you can use their integrated ruby development environment you can choose the language but and you can see they have ruby 2.5.5 and this is the irb pretty much an irb for interactive clip all right this version of irb is drastically different from the previous version if you hit it all right so they also have IRB, same thing which we are doing over here. All right. But okay, let's see. Next, actually, do they have RBM? No. 
through. Mm -hmm. oh, All right. I, I'm not gonna use this because this is Ruby 2.5.5. Ruby version, maybe 2.5.5. Yeah, I'm gonna use my, uh, this um, 3.0.2, which I installed through uh, RBM. Anyway, so, if you want, if you don't want to go through all the installation, you can use this as well, but I will recommend you should, you know, install. Actually, in the next, I, I will read, like, look more into JIT, you know, just in time compiler, and try to find, like, by, I don't think JIT is used by default, but, yeah, and we can do some benchmarking later down the line by comparing JIT with Ruby 3.2 normal. point wait a second so last year yeah here it's a pretty good history so as it is a ruby was too slow because we focus on runtime efficiency so we tried to do many things engine was very slow it was written by me and Koji came in and was replaced so we are trying to do new things to boost the performance even though we are an even though we are an open source project and not a business uh, but it was important so I named it Ruby 3 times 3 the goal is to make Ruby 3 run 3 times faster as compared to Ruby 2.0 use JIT technique just in time we don't use that yet so by using that kind of technology and uh, yeah so the speed of 2.0 many performance improvements so we want to include the effort in this a real world opinion maybe so it could happen so we're going to set a benchmark they they yeah they do mention that rails might not get the full performance benefit or something like that but normal ruby you will get performance benefit yeah there is one huge problem with mjrt will slow down rails instead of speeding it up whoops oh. turn jrt off and uh, you can use the disable jrt command line oh i want to do that um okay let's try one more thing how about I do this? Disable. Ooh. No, you don't want JIT, and you may want run the system through. You can explicitly turn JIT off. Okay, they, maybe it would be awesome if they provide an example. Okay, how do I disable this? No, this is integrated Ruby, no, not this. I think it should be like Ruby, Ruby file. Oh, maybe, okay. Oh, okay. I see what I did wrong. Because I broke the second argument towards running a Ruby file is the file name itself. So maybe I should create file dot rb yeah now we have we should be having a let me actually open that folder here oops sorry okay cool I mean, yeah so let us shut this down i think you guys already saw the steps right uh, ruby version is here that's nice RBM uses this root dot Ruby version file to uh, store local Ruby <coughs> or scope Ruby uh, detail. So this file dot Ruby version is used by RBM 
to determine what particular version Ruby is at. Let's delete this file and try this, all right? Let's see what happens. I am curious though. Ah, uh, see? So I deleted the file and it got to the global one. I don't want that. So I want to fix Ruby at 3.0.0. Go to the file. You see it installed this file. Ruby version. And that's where the Ruby version is stored. That's awesome. So RBM does it. And it's, excuse me, <coughs> it's kind of like sub scope. Okay. All right. Uh, where were we? Okay. Mm, let me do like this. Oops. No, sir, you should not be here. Let's say I want to print. Okay. Hello. Word. All right. So now we come over here. Come on. And now I'm going to try to run that uh, Ruby. And we have file.rb. And then I'm gonna do disable JIT, which these guys are saying. I think you can read it, right? Uh, let me know in the chat if you are watching. By the way, if you if you don't know, I am going to try every Sunday. That's my rest day. I like to read more, you know, new topics, and you know, explore and and just share with you something new. Share with you. A pair program with you guys and we try to learn something new or try to build some cool stuff all right today we are trying to learn <laughs> all right we, we yeah we are trying to learn not like really building but it's fun okay last last session last week was more about building so we built a plagiarism checker this time let's take a chill pill let's learn fun, like fundamentals a little bit all right not Ruby fundamental, but concurrency. I want to play around with that. Let's see. Nice. Okay. So that's how you provide the flag. So by default, okay, what the fuck? Okay. By default, let me increase this to here. All right. So by default, Ruby, if you run Ruby file.rb, the file would be compiled by use of JIT compiler. If you add this disable JIT, where did I go? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, Ruby disable J Ruby, then you add file name and then disable JIT. Then it would use um I think uh, Matt's Ruby compiler. Right, the older one. You can use the rare command line or I want to do that if you want to turn it off. All right, that's that's cool. Now we know how to use and not to use JIT compiler. We can also do some benchmarking. Although, let's do that exploration later. I want to get into uh, concurrency right now. Why might you want to J? Okay, slow down. You may know you're running a tiny program like Gemlist local that won't benefit. No compiler available, your benchmark, you don't want JIT because you want pretty much. Memory usage, MJIT is unusually good for JIT, but it's not. Weird platform, something, something, all right. What's my, if you're running Rails, non, if they say, if you're running, God dang, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Okay, there we go. If you're running a non Rails Ruby app and you would like to speed it up, test it out with JIT. It's likely to do some good, or at least if CPU is slowing you down. If you're running a Rails app or you don't need better CPU, don't do anything. At some point in the future, JIT will become default and then you will use it automatically. Oh. So if I do JIT with this flag, wait. Is it just me or you also felt like that was faster? What the fuck is happening here? I think it was much faster. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that was much faster. Do you see that? 
All right, so let me actually sleep. Although sleep is the worst way you can do things like this, but all right, let's just try it. All right. So we disable the JIT. It took this much time with sleep added. With JIT. All right, my bad. This is not the best <laughs> way to test it. I I would like to have a program which is kind of like which takes time. Uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, okay. Yay. Okay. I can eat late. Yeah. Half hour. All right. Thank you, sir. So, yeah, I do think this is like JIT is much faster for sure. All right. So yeah, you can. By default, it does it mean like it's turned off? Yeah, I think by default it's turned. Okay, I don't, I don't. Know. <laughs> this is not the best example, but Ruby three point two point two, as he is saying, it is using JIT. So I think by default it should be using JIT. All right. Ah shit, I'm reading some, who is this guy, my bad, I thought it was documentation, no, 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 supposed to give performance improvement in such as games or whatever application that spend the majority of time calling a few months a minute time, all the Ruby size of JIT code, it's still not ready for optimizing, okay, yeah, the default is JIT, alright, good. But again, it is still not ready for optimizing workloads like rail, which often spend time on so many methods and therefore suffer from eye cache misses exhibited by JIT. Eye cache, what is eye cache? Let's look it up. I guess refer to instruction cache. These refer to split cache design where two small cache exist, one exclusive. What instruction can these refer to a split can design where two can tend to favor either code or data. Alright. That's more like system cache, I think. Yeah. That's yeah, so, now let's move on to our main topic. But yeah, if you want you can read about iCache. I think these are system caches and they are saying like therefore Ruby if you use with Rails, they suffer from iCache misses, which is exaggerated by exact ex Exact Cerberi. Am I pronouncing it right? <laughs> Let me see. Pronunciation. Exacerbated. Exacerbated. All right. There you go. 3.1 for further improvement. All right. Let's go. Cool. We can see what happens in 3.1. Maybe rails become faster. That'd be cool. All right. Let's uh, moving on current grade concurrency. It's multi core age concurrency is very important with Raptor. Oh yeah, they, they launched this Raptor um, uh, along with async fiber. Ruby will be great language. Raptor is an actor model like concurrent abstraction designed to provide a parallel execution feature without threat safety concerns. All right. Yeah, so there was an issue when you would be doing like thread programming and uh, you are using thread on like unsafe th thread or unsafe uh, data structures it doesn't really work well with thread uh, you know threading in Ruby before 3.2.0 so they fixed it and it uh, looks like Raptor which is still experimental it is designed to provide this uh, we don't have to worry about thread safety etc again thread if you know they share memory but uh, like they share the heap i think yeah and they share the memory while 
uh, they execute a uh, task in parallel uh, but processes they have separate memory they have separate heaps separate stack separate everything all right so uh, if you are using thread a, a data structure which is, which is thread unsafe then you might be running into weird cases where uh, actually i think it's same of Yeah, so yes, when you are working with thread and you are utilizing non-thread thread safe data structure, uh, same, uh, because of use of semaphores, they might be causing some issues with respect to accessing that data structure. So stack is a good data structure to be used when you're using thread programming in Ruby or any language, while uh, array would not be such a good one all right you can read more about semaphores if you want semaphore is signaling mechanism and a thread is that is waiting or a semaphore can be signaled by an to use atomic operation yeah it's mainly about accessing something so that deadlock condition doesn't happen so one thread sets say semaphore and then another one accesses the same memory location you can read more about it uh, if you have taken it uh, and if you want to go in depth you can take a, an operating system uh, grad, graduate class and you can read more about it. You can learn more about it. All right, coming back here. Reactor is an actor model like concurrent abstraction. All right. One more, th one thing for sure is, I have seen what, what has worked for me is that when whenever I see something which I don't understand, I'll just, I gotta look it up, otherwise I won't understand. So what is actor model? The actor model is a conceptual model to deal with concurrent computation. It defines some general rule for how the system components. So it's a conceptual model to deal with concurrent computation. It defines some general rules for how the system's components should behave and interact with each other. The most famous language that uses is Erlang. All right. Mathem it's a mathematical model of concurrent computation that treats actor as the universal primitive of concurrent computation i mean like the atomic uh, component in com current uh, concurrent computation an actor can make a local decision create more actors and more blah 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 private stage the actor model and it has been used both as a framework for a theoretical understanding of computation and as theoretical basis for several practical implementation of our current system all right so mainly All right. So actor model is mainly a mathematical computational, concurrent computational concept where different actors can uh, have, can undertake different actions and uh, uh, concurrently. So okay, that's pretty much what they're saying. Actor is an actor model like concurrent abstraction. Okay, so that is based on that mathematical uh, principle that mathematical concept like concrete designed to provide a parallel execution feature without thread safety concern you can make multiple reactors and you can run them in parallel reactor so reactor would be actor that's why i think i think the name comes from actor plus ruby reactor <laughs> reactor enable you to make a thread safe parallel so they took the mathematical concept and converted it into a reusable uh, component and provided into Ruby 3.0 library. Ooh, okay, you can make multiple reactor. You can run them in parallel. I wonder like all right
Hmm. There are more features there. That's cool. Hmm. This is interesting. Define a square equals this. So you don't need an end now. Huh. Interesting. So previously, what they're saying is previously we used to do this, right? Uh, let's say is prime. Right? But they're saying now you don't have to do this. And they showcase it through this example right over here as well. So like this function, yeah, to right equals this. All right, cool. We okay. So that this is the new function. Uh, it's a new pattern introduced in Ruby three point Let's use it. That would be fun. These libraries have been okay. So I think a lot of gems would be updated there. <laughs> Ruby gems 3.2.3. Following are non default gems and are published on Ruby gems. So these are gems. All right. Enough of this. Let's uh, start with our thread. Okay, then we will also explore processes. By the way, I'll start with thread. Then I will get into more detail about the gem which uses concurrent programming. I mean, which through which you can do concurrent programming pretty well. Then we will come back and we will look into Rector, uh, which is right here, which he mentioned. Rector over here, and then we can we can also look into Fiber Scheduler 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 what however you call it all right so um let's write a simple function all right define is prime equals i'm gonna write it with older syntax and then i'm gonna convert it to newer one just try i mean why not <laughs> right so define is prime what is is prime so return uh, that takes a parameter uh number I wonder how that would work with this guy. Endless method definition. Oh, it, okay, got it. Okay, cool. So it, I think it's like kind of uh, no React has fat, like TypeScript has fat arrow. Maybe not. Never mind. So return and true if number zero simple prime number execution so if it is lower than three we know it's a prime number and then what we need to do is we need to go from two or two that uh, math dot square root of that number you know the num maybe plus one should be okay you know, dot each do yeah divisor with dividend in the portion dividend so the return file see if you know simple prime number calculation return false if uh, num person dividend equal to zero return otherwise we return true okay Uh, 
Now, come on. All right, there we go. So, to measure the execution time of this function, I'm gonna do a bench, uh, benchmark, I think, yeah. Let me see. Benchmark, all right, module. So it's a, benchmark is a Ruby module, by the way, which helps measure uh, time of execution for a particular function. And we want to measure that, right, in this case. So uh, what we can do is you can provide sequence using a beam. you can do which model dot measure will take a block and finally give you the uh, CPU time system CPU time the sum of the user and system CPU time the total time is here. and ellipse real time sorry this would be the real time the unit of time is second let's do this so now we come here benchmark that measure in or i think you can do it block as well i'm pretty sure you can find provide block as well so i want to do zero actually zero up to 100 dot dot h do put in prime number This looks good enough. Let's uh, let's execute this. Eh? I want to use GIT. God dang, that was fast. But all right, looks like benchmark dot measure. Did it? Okay, I have to do it. Puts. All right. Okay, let's go over here. Come on, get in the. So, uh, total time 0 0.000473. That's cool, good enough. Now, what I'm gonna do is so let's measure, let's see. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 is true, 4 false, 5 is true, 6 false, 7 is true, 8 false, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17. Yeah, it looks, the program looks fine. All right. So now uh, what we're going to do, we will uh, add a sleep over here. All right. And so the execution time currently when there was, you know, when the processing was pretty fast, the process there was no like the program completion was pretty the program was pretty easy simple we got a really good you know uh, time so the total time taken was 0.004069 millisecond i think yeah something like that now what i'm gonna do i am going to execute these inside a thread okay so for thread, I think you need to add it inside this block. Okay. And let's we like we'll start hundred yeah hundred threads, hundred one hundred threads, yeah. And uh, then execute them, execute each call inside a thread. Let's see how it goes. So 
the total was this. Why did it not print anything? Hmm. Let me look it up. I'll look it up. So thread dot new uh, puts it should be executing it right. So what happened over here? Um, I'm not sure like what exactly happened over here, but let's see. It's still new. Thread dot new threads. Oh yeah. Also, we have to join the thread. Uh, before the main thread terminate, then all of the thread including thread will be killed. So yeah, we also have to do list like join. Yeah. And threads. And finally we have to do thread.join. Alright. No, I return is better. Yeah. All right. Let's try. See, low undefined thread. Okay. Threads. It. This one took this much time. All right. So with thread, it took longer than you know without the thread so we come here oops uh, just remove all of this with thread all right uh, remove all of this thread join thread okay and when we measure this guy we have 0 0.00062 so yeah so with thread we got this guy without thread we got this well you can see let me make it side by side you can see sequential execution without thread gave us better result okay the whole program finished pretty fast well in that case is thread bad well it depends if we intentionally make this program run longer let's see what happens now all right so now we will measure the whole program execution time so now it's gonna execute one by one one by one again the program is still executing we don't know the time okay it's running sequentially sleeping down so the overall benchmark time dude it's gonna be really long all right now as you can see it's gonna take a long some time so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to just wait for it all right so let me just give me one second i'm gonna take a break and come back while this program execute okay
all right sir so we are back and let's see the total time it took to finish this 202 so if the your program is long the total time it took is much longer all right give me one second So now the time is this. Actually, I'm not gonna do this. Okay, I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna write and remove all the time. What I'm gonna do is let's do define. Uh, sequential benchmark equals this. All right, yeah and we will define actually let me first oops, 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 oops. by the way if you're thinking where this equal thing come from well we just saw the whoops uh okay we just saw in here the ruby 3 documentation the endless method definition has been added so we can do something like this that's convenient so this would be conquer thread thread benchmark all right so now we define these two guys now what we could do is we could run them side by side without having to write this right so i'm gonna call puts sequential benchmark puts thread benchmark all right so it will run each of them one by one and then we will get the results well what we need to do is go benchmark.measure and then finally well, i wonder one thing that is a function so i call this one yeah it should be all right yeah so let's measure so by the way you can see it took 202 seconds all right 200 seconds to execute the whole thing when we added a sleep over here before the program is executed although you you could have been like well why did you just add this program well i had just so we have some calculation and we can see that steps are going on you know multi multi steps program but yeah you can add any program over here you can just do like put 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 or print print whatever but yeah, I, I was like yeah whatever i like this um all right let's go over here and i'm gonna execute these okay. uh oh maybe i should put the thread benchmark first although I wonder okay maybe i have to fine tune this method thread benchmark because it's not printing out the results but hey let's start again i'm gonna clear my video my my camera and let this program run all right this is thread execution by the way do you see how fast it is So the program almost it started all these threads right away okay so multiple threads are concurrently running at the same time and they are re returning all these results at the same time actually what i should do is i should add like puts oops now but one thing for sure we gotta remember is that now let me check everything is working fine give me one second
Yeah, I think everything is working fine. Okay. All right, cool. Although we are doing this sequentially, the results might not come in sequentially. Maybe it will be like true false and then now executing. The reason is because in between, the reason because again, these are threads. They are executing concurrently. You don't know when one is over. So they are gonna give out result, print out the result, do IO operation of printing out the result at the same time. But let's execute this with JIT compiler. So the first one, executed and now the first one is i think finishing up it's gonna be pretty hard to determine which one is actually printing at what time but yeah you can see like that the first one started the total uh oops sorry the total overall uh, see elapsed real time was this much here elapsed real time for the first one at 0 0.0020 you know this is in a second then it started executing this one i think yeah so the result would be pretty mixed but maybe the third one is not even printing out results let me actually close this and try this okay maybe the first one is not even printing out any result yeah my bad It, uh, I mean, it, it's working for sure, but the threads are not printing out the result. The total CPU time computed, computed because this is happening uh, kind of asynchronously. The total computation time, I mean, by thread, not uh, concurrently, not asynchronous. So the total time to execute the script was this, this whole thing, this whole code black block. But threads are gonna run in the background. So let me take a break. All right. Let's choose a nice uh, be right back poster. I know I'm I'm, I'm so fucking lazy, <laughs> but okay. Sorry about this, but yeah. Uh, all right, there we go. Yeah, I'm being so fucking lazy. <laughs> But anyway, I'll see you in a few minutes. I gotta have so uh, I need to eat something. All right, see you.
right i am back sorry i had to eat some dinner <laughs> now let me see all right good so let's pick up where we were if you are still watching so we see that uh, this guy is not really printing stuff right why is that maybe it's not thread shape safe huh? I ate something really <laughs> spicy <laughs> all right okay it still is not printing all right sir what is the issue so returning something right is prime is returning should i do this i'm not sure i just want to let's see what happens Find this what thread did. Oh, uh, okay. Have to do like thread dot result, thread dot print, something like that. Thread dot value, maybe. Yeah. Maybe this is what I have to do. <clears throat> no. <coughs> Undefined method this for thread. Oh, wait, what the fuck I did? <laughs> My bad. Okay, this is better. Okay. Now it is printing. So the inner print is not working. Interesting. Alright. Yeah, for thread. Now thread is handling executing that so there is a wrapper around the return value so you'd have to do thread dot value to get the value of that function. But anyway, uh, let's execute this. Not print. If you don't know print doesn't add a new line. We wanted to add new line, right? So <coughs> let's uh, execute both of them now. Both of them. <laughs> both of them. All right, uh, let's go there. This got started. Hmm. Where is the mint benchmark dot measure? Still taking the same time? Well, each of them is now doing IO operation. So an extra IO. Actually, you know what? Let's not let it do IO operation. All right. Let both of them just finish, and we'll see the total time. Huh? So that the first one. I mean, the threads didn't finish, but the first one, the line of code in the benchmark uh, that whole CPU it executed in the whole I mean it probably it spun off thread that's the time and now it's now executing sequential is executing one by one so it's not finished yet <clears throat> all right let's try one thing it will be fun but let's try to do an IO operation, all right? And not like zero to ten. Maybe zero to I mean zero to ten is better. 
Let's compare this two. So it will be like five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Although there's a dog outside. <laughs> got spooked off. So it's working. Hmm. So the total CPU time here was 22 and the time over there was 0 0.00. But I mean the program executed but the threads are still running. Yeah. So we want to if we do IO operations. Okay, give me one second. Thank you, sir. Mm, thank you, sir. <laughs> Din, 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 din. Or I'm thinking what can we try which you might I'm thinking about file writing to the file let's try let's see what happens all right just for fun So let's go to the Ruby class file. Although we could change it to core 3.0.0. Maybe they added something cool in file. Although I didn't see anything in file really, but alright, whatever. <coughs> file dot pin. open then here mm, no there's like one liner which is where is that file dot new all right we could use this file dot open so let's go here and we can open it No, I don't want to do this file dot open. I don't want to do in a block, you know. So yeah, this is this is better. File dot new. Okay. I forgot file dot new. Out thread. Are a thread. Right plus so append plus maybe. Give me one second, I'm gonna just close the window. That dog is just annoying me now.
All right, we are back. Okay. So let me try a file operation. All right. So outthread dot txt file. Although I'm thinking, it would be like the one thread would be writing the file, then other thread would have to wait. So it can't really process. I'm just thinking there might be some issues, but it would be fun to explore, right? <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead, file.write, and then at the end we will do file.flows. So, file we open. Is this? Okay, and this is under this, all right. Let's uh, write this like this, alright. Like this. Um, and then we have straight dot value. Alright, that is that looks better. <coughs> and at the end we wanna close the oops. So we would try to write the value in a file. Let's see how long it takes. All right. I'm gonna stop the sequential benchmark. Let's see. This might not happen. Not even executed it. <laughs> Shit. That is funny. Okay, so it is being out thread. Nothing is here really. Out threads writing here. No. Maybe the file operation is not thread safe. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh. So they all did finish. But. They wrote like it took it took like total of twenty two seconds as I was thinking. Since IO is gonna be sequential, there's just one. How about we because there is just one resource, right? And multiple threads threads are trying to access it. So of course at one time only one thread would have a lock, a semaphore on that file. So, you know, it becomes a sequential operation. But how about we create multiple files? Yeah. Let's see, I create this file here. Let's try this, okay? So now I'm gonna put all this file. Although I could use the file block itself, but eh, whatever, I'm lazy. <laughs> so I'm gonna open this new file here. Okay. I will write uh, to the file. Okay. And then I'll close the file here as well. All right, now let's see what happens, how much time it takes, because now the same resource is not being accessed by each of the thread. So this, I think it should be faster. 
but we will see what happens all right uh undefined local variable num what oh i said no <laughs> all right that's why Second, let me make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. All right, so underscore this. Okay, so here is my file. Define thread group. Okay. is doing sequentially mm. yeah it's doing sequentially that's not what I want to well maybe because the port it is using to you know open a file can be accessed only one at a time. So, yeah, maybe this is not the best example. We will also try it with uh, what Ruby 3.0 is uh, recommending. But, all right. ah. Let's try it with the other one. All right. I'm gonna do the same thing pretty much. And I'm gonna write it down right here. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to execute. So I think it was 22 seconds. Let's see. I think it would be the same. Yeah. Yeah, I think the reason is because Every, all of them are accessing IO like bus or IO port at the same time. I mean sequentially. So it's not like they are executing, they are accessing everything at the same time. So yeah, maybe this is not the best example. I think like for both of them for file operations, it was the same total time. Yeah, I'm not happy with this. All right, let's go to the Ruby docs and uh, spend some time and try what they are recommending here. So here, they talked about uh, uh, this Rector and they also talked about async, right? This fiber schedule. All right, it is introduced by, for intercepting blocking operation. This allows for lightweight concurrency without changing existing code. So I'm gonna try this, okay? And let me try async now. So so far we just tried thread. So what did we do? We tried to set uh, set up Ruby a little bit with RBN, setting up the local uh, using IRB. Then we decided, all right, let's start with the project. And in the project, we are using you know simple East Prime. Uh, example we added a slip time we have two benchmarking a thread benchmark and a sequential benchmark and we just compared for file operation even if they are writing to different files for each of the loop we saw that probably because they are accessing the same port or the bus for IO uh, it looks like it's just allowing one at a time operation all right but <coughs> excuse me so that was the through thread.new you can execute multiple threads at a time but you might face a limitation when it comes to io let's try what they are recommending i'm gonna run this asynchronously right. so now we have require async 
everything is gonna be the same the only difference it's gonna be I'm gonna wrap this up so uh, let me write a new method actually yeah that would be the best so let me remove this remove this and define async bench that would be here async do async do async do and all right good so we don't need to do threads and stuff we just need to execute things all right so we take this this whole thing till here and just drop it over here all right sir 0 to 10 I execute is prime we just will write it here is prime num and then we do close that looks good to me does it look good to you all right so async benchmark async do oh we need to wrap this whole thing inside benchmark as well yes sir we do so now we have this whole thing okay i think there will be one more so this is for this one then there is async do so there will be another one here let me bring async code over here just okay better and then finally we do this guy. We don't need this in. All right. Yeah, better. So now we do the same thing. That's actually yeah. Async benchmark. Now executing so we saw we did execute thread and things started at the same I think there was some issue you know what let me try without thread as well all right Uh, I'm sorry, let me try the thread benchmark without the use of JIT compiler. Maybe JIT compiler is the issue. That's option. Cannot load such file async. I did require async. Why can't it load any file? What's up with this? Hmm? Ah, I removed the <laughs> RBM generated file, that's why. That's what I was thinking. All right. No. Oh, I didn't. Oops. So what's the issue here? Sync cannot load such file as sync. Let's see what it is saying. This is someone else. No, it's just a video. Saying cannot load such file async.
scratch let me actually i'll come back to it later let me try to execute it without jit first no it's taking the same time so yeah jit is not making the difference the io operation is sequential probably because io port it's trying to open the io port with this the io port is not being accessed concurrently it's being accessed yeah it's the same thing nope nothing really all right so now we don't want to execute this guy we don't want sequential we want async benchmark and here we are seeing that there is some issue let's look it up Ruby 3.0.0 cannot load async cannot load async alright let's go to the github Ruby yep uh, wait a second this is no it's okay at on the 11th okay cool so i want to see some issues over here what the fuck are the issues what I'm trying to see how they are utilizing async. Let's say issues. All right. Let's check it here in the issues itself. No, there's none. It's like 2018. I don't want 2018. Okay, 19 days. Not best match. Uh, newest. All right. Oh, what is this here? I wonder if I'm doing everything right so they're talking about five let me go back to the ruby documentation yeah oh, i should have opened it in another tab come on okay there we go fiber is introduced Wait, IO wait, IO read, read and related method. IO select is not supported. Oh. Oh. Wait a second. Is this a separate like a gem? What the fuck? Alright, it's not part of Ruby maybe. Yeah, maybe not. Alright, let's go to... Where is it? Like, where exactly is it using fiber scheduler? See. 
passing to all right so async oh maybe i i understood it wrong this code is using async which is using this event loop uses fiber scheduler hooks to make a net http non blocking all right so we can't i mean we can't really use it. So give me one second ruby fiber hmm. okay maybe i was at the wrong place i was using the wrong example let's come five okay fibers are primitive for implementing lightweight cooperative concurrency oh basically they are a means of creating code blocks that can be fast and reason much like thread they are never preempted and that the scheduling must be done by the program and not the beam fiber dot new first plus two This looks a bit more complex than I thought. So let's just actually go back to this guy, which is Rector Experimental. Rector. All right, let me try this one instead. Yeah, my bad. Async is a gem. It's not part of Ruby library. Uh, Rect, um, fiber is. But fiber has some issue with respect to scheduling, so you have to start and close the job yourself. So we can, we might or might not look into it if we solve the problem with Rector, which also provides, you know, concurrent abstraction, uh, which also provides concurrent processing. Let's say if if we are able to solve this issue. So instead of this, uh, I should change this to Rector. Rector benchmark. Uh, no, this will not be there. This prime dot right blah blah blah. And the way to do it is rector dot new. All right. So let's write it here. Rector dot new. I should also try async, you know. And there's one more gem which I saw. I'm gonna also gonna try that, but we can try it later. Right now, let's try Rector benchmark. Ooh, new cannot isolate a prod because it access outer variable. What? new cannot isolate prop because it accesses outer variables argument error all right how are these guys doing oh inside the loop they are doing am i not doing inside the loop i think i'm doing inside the loop now yeah, it is using outside variable what the hell it is talking about This is interesting. New cannot isolate a proc. And it was thread dot new. Huh, what am I doing wrong here? What am I doing wrong? Is prime. Oh. Maybe I should take these guys out. Hmm. 
vector dot new inside rector can I not like just write that uh, oh maybe I should do no but that won't be synchronous I want it to be that won't be concurrent if I move rector dot new into is prime I mean what I'm thinking is should I move rector dot new and wrap this guy but then I want the whole this whole thing to be asynchronous Okay, the same thing I'm getting. Looks like I'm missing something here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is not what I want. <coughs> yeah, this is not what I want. What is this? be called with a block well I passed a five block was wrong with that <laughs> hmm. you cannot isolate the prop because it accesses outer all right so this is not an error associated with that I'm just gonna move this out and move this whole thing inside here yeah. <coughs> excuse me excuse me Okay, let's let's view the dock here. A rector, Ruby's actor. Each rector has one or more thread. Thread in a rector share a rector wide global lock. So they can't run in parallel. Turn in different rector run in parallel. Immutable of the frozen object will not refer to a share of class model rector. Rector dot send, rector dot receive. Rector dot list block will run in parallel with other rector. Oh, so should I should I have done like this? Maybe yeah. What can you do? Maybe let's see. No. Huh. Okay. The rector execute given expression in a given block. Given block will be isolated from outer scope by progress to prevent sharing block outer self. This is what is happening actually. R equal director dot new and it is a we are accessing outer variable self of the given block director. Past argument rector line becomes block parameter for all the nine point does not pass. Masses equal to rector C. Ah, interesting. Do do I have to do something like this? So pass 
block parameter to the given block. What is this? Okay. Oh, message. I'm not missing out something. Factor experimental. Oh, okay. Did that just run? Okay. Wait a second. Wait a second. Ah. All right. This is good. This is good. Did you see that? I like this. So. It all print, but nothing came over here. Looks like is prime has to pass here, maybe. Yeah, something like this is yes. prime. Here we do is prime. Is that so? I'm not sure. Let's see. All right, I got happy a little too early. <laughs> Let's see. It's also doing sequentially. It should not be doing sequentially. Looks like in this case, Rector is still doing it sequentially and it's going to take 22 seconds total. Yeah. It didn't really help with anything. So you pass in the object here, message dot object, which is the so message the object of the dot id or right? all right for our case I tried Raptor as well it's like. Okay, this example is more like ours. Rector dot new I fib I but So this one yeah, that's what we did here. We passed in rector of new just like num and then we passed in here and this executed. Select. 
did this write it out? Yeah, it did write out, but it was sequential. Workal pool. What is this? Prime by vector dot new loop vector u dot to receive pipe to pipe do pipe it passes the pipe over here through this block variable when n equal to pipe dot tech vector dot yield what is worker worker all right I can design it is designed but it's not it's the same thing is happening again. It's not really executing in parallel when it comes to file operation. But hey, uh, how about I remove the file operation and I just print it out. What happens then? Okay. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Is prime simple? Is prime? I just wanna oh no it should be this yeah so how about now we'll have the now it is executing one by one yeah probably am I missing something not sure but yeah looks like a reactor is doing the same thing Thread was executing and thread.new was executing it in better ways. 22 second. Nothing. Ruby gem concurrent. Okay. Concurrent Ruby. What I'm currently doing to agent feature promise of blah 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 blah. Alright, let's see. Do remember there was a gem? Let me see my notes. What was the name of the gem? something out concurrent ruby all right how do you execute a tuple map blah, blah, blah. just give me an example man no example There was one multiple process. Where was that? Multithreading. Yeah, this is a good uh, block, by the way, by Iqbal Quran. Red pool, yeah. What was the gem? I forgot the name. Celluloid, maybe? There's one more, I think. Just like, 
Yeah, by the way, sidekick, if you use sidekick, it uses uh, multi-threading concept and executes your jobs in different threads concurrently. Hmm. Okay. This looks promising. Celluloid. Let's see. Oops. No home page is not good. <laughs> December 20. Okay. Just what happened to your home page, dude? What the hell? Okay. Where is the GitHub? Source code, maybe. Alright. Celluloid. Holy shit, what the hell? No, this is Ruby on Rails. Well, I don't think like it really solved any. I mean, for IO operation, it was almost the same from our understanding. Yeah, maybe I might be something wrong here. Let's see what this guy did. He's sending a mail, but. Right? Hmm. All right. So let's looks like as per this guy is saying that Ruby concurrency without parallelism, uh, the global interpreter log is a mechanism used in computer language interpreter to synchronize the execution so that only one thread can execute at one time. We we have to use. So let's try JRuby and Rubinius. All right, to see like is that what the fuck? Okay. Uh, let's see if I could real JRuby. Download JRuby, unpack JRuby, run JRuby. Let's see if I can install JRuby with uh, Brew. Okay, so it is installing JRuby. Let's try this example with JRuby, which is a Java implementation. 
So Ruby compiler used to be written in Ruby. There are Ruby compiler written in Ruby itself. The Ruby compiler written in I think uh, Java in C++. Sorry, C. Uh, yeah. I think Matt's Ruby was written as. Let's see. Yeah, C Ruby. It was written in C, I think. Yeah. I think it was written in C. Hmm, Ruby implemented Ruby. So J Ruby is on Java virtual machine, and Ruby MRI I think is it, it, it's it. let's see, it should be written in C. Yeah. Oh, this was the benchmark. I don't think it was. Compiler I'm looking at. Mac Ruby J Opal Ruby to JavaScript source. Go Ruby. Ruby MRI. Written in Ruby. I think it was written in C. There is a Ruby library written, a Ruby compiler written in Ruby itself. <laughs> but yeah, we are not gonna. Okay, looks like J Ruby got installed. So how do we get? I have not utilized J Ruby beforehand, so let's do it. It's my first time as well. Let's try to run J Ruby with this. Okay. Home page download. Learn. How do I execute this? Okay, box. Getting started. Okay, JRuby version. JRuby nine point two point one four something twenty twenty two or something. Or No warning. Ooh, I should have done it through this. Okay, let's do it through RVN itself. Yeah, that's much better. Sorry, let's not do it with, it was my bad. Let's not do it with uh, uh, Brew, let's do it with RVN. Yeah. Okay, this is better. So now we can manage JRuby through RVN itself and set the local to JRuby and then use the compiler without having to deal with anything. Yeah, this is much better implementation. I mean, this is much better way of doing this. <laughs> so let it install JRuby. Right. Again, JRuby written in JVM. I mean, compiler. Compiler is written in Java Virtual Machine. So I think it's much faster. We'll see. This gem is installed. RVM versions 
um, J Ruby, R V M on local. Set this to this guy J Ruby. Okay. Yeah. Don't install it through Ruby. All right. I don't think you should install it through RPM. That's better. That was my bad. All right, let's run this program again and let's really see if we could find something good. All right. Okay, so. Oh, but. Okay, I don't think this is Ruby 3.0.0, so we'll have to change our. No, Rector is not gonna work either. Thread is better, but we'll have to change this thread. Define thread. Reason because well it's 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 not uh, the changes have been in Ruby 3.0.0 not in JRuby remember so that's why we have to change this again all right there is Java compiler so it might throw like all right um, Actually, we could actually just change it right here, you know. Just add something like end here. Then you add something like this. And then you do this guy. Okay. We can just remove this thing. By the way, again, if you're using Ruby 3.0.0, you can use this particular, this way of writing functions. All right. So they say this is called. Endless method definition. All right. No, JRuby is doing the same thing. What the hell? It's doing the same thing with thread was doing. Where's the difference? Still twenty two. Although the Ruby version is J Ruby. I don't know, dude. It doesn't look like. Okay, how about what if I change this here? Hmm? What if I do this? Ah, 
uh, oops, sorry, not for this guy. Uh, this guy. Take this guy out and then in. I got close. Yeah, all right. This looks better. I'm just checking if anything changes when I'm doing, you know, only one uh, file when it, they all are writing to the same file. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think anything is different really. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Again, took the same time, 22 seconds. So I don't think anything, anything changed really. You know. Let's see what other people have to say about it. Sorry about that. Let me get to the messages. I just saw your message. One second. Sorry about that. Let me get to here. I should get back to the help me run tab. All right. Anyway, let's get back to the. By the way, thanks for thanks for the chat. Okay, let's get back here. Uh, okay. So. Right, so far we saw like, 
So, so far we saw that although we switched the implementation to JRuby, I mean the compiler, we still were not able to get like our IO operations, writing to different files done concurrently. Hmm. Let's see if we can figure this out. So, okay, native threads. Yeah, we are working with native threads right now, I think. JRuby native, not native threads. Hmm. System with large volumes of email, this native approach may not work well. Native threads carry a bigger initialization cost and memory overhead than green threads. So zero B cannot support more than ten thousand duration. Executor. I don't care about the executor right now. I just want to write to the files concurrently. That's what I'm trying to achieve. And I'm not seeing an improvement in the CPU uh, computation time. So let's see. Let's see if let's see what others are saying. Seem that my writing is completely thread safe, but it didn't happen to me. Ruby MRI 1.8.7. Interesting, it's now where I face concrete. Can you file locky? If you wish for money to write to the same file, they should all use the same file object. So, do this. Ah. Maybe this is the problem I'm having. Hmm, because I was opening a new file, but uh, let's see what is going wrong here. File out open. All right. Then we have the file name and stuff. Then we provide a block. Do f. And then and this will go all over here file that open blah 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 do f then we have the execution the thread safe and everything and then the thread safe yeah thread done Yeah, I have to do thread dot value because otherwise it will just write an object there. That's not what I want. File dot open. And we have to do. Hmm, we could just close the file here. Let's say thread is uh, empty array or cube or whatever. File dot open with this guy. Do f zero to ten. This is like the zero to ten dot each two now. Thread is thread dot new is prime 
then we write to the thread uh, array and then we join our thread queue array. Looks right to me. Okay, well, <laughs> let's try again. I don't think it's gonna improve because we are pretty much doing the same thing. So, but anyway, let's try. No. What is going on? Uh, wait a second. I think I know what it. Maybe I should put the whole thing inside. Oh. Oh my god. Wait. Was this the issue I was doing? No, but... Oh, this might work actually. Okay, let's try. I don't know yet. <laughs> let's try. Maybe the exit. Maybe the way I was executing beforehand would also work because I'm writing to the file and file is like available in the scope. Okay, let's try. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Nice. Well, nothing is written because the threads are not right now working. Okay, it doesn't look like anything is being written. Yeah. Well, this overall CPU time for this program was like this Ruby, this file.rb was this much, but still I don't see any written stuff over there. What's going wrong? So we saw like although the program finished for some reason, although I feel we are very close. Yeah, we are really close. Mm. I'm not right. Uh, let's see how this guy he did like FP dot puts not right. Huh. Let's see what's the difference between puts and right what is which one is thread safe ah uh, that's interesting fp dot puts probably save from any real thread by one but now what happened in the two rights might occur in the yeah, that's why we are using J Ruby. It seems like we predicted that Ruby with locks and it to ensure that your code keeps going. Alright, F dot right. For sure, it didn't write anything. Let's see if the puts. I don't think that's gonna work really, but all right. Will it? Nothing is written really. Yeah. Well, the benchmark is showing that the whole program computed within this much time. 
but the threads didn't really write anything to the out thread does it mean they are not really executing that let me try just this guy all right i'm just gonna remove the comments i'm just gonna try this let's see what happens there took a bit longer nope nothing is written all right something is not right okay let's see what these guys are saying trying to write to a file how the code below gives me an exception close thread of each thread i mean i'm yeah i'm doing probably the same thing file that open append What am I missing in, in terms of thread? Maybe over here to add this guy. That's the only difference I see. So we go in a loop. File.open. That's it. That's cool. Do have, then we close the file over here. Threads are like this. Then we do the threads. Thread.new. Huh. Well, they provided a do block. Would that change anything? I mean, that would be just a block, right? I don't think it should change anything. But I, my main point is to right now just make it work. And looks like this user, he has tried to do that. And it is JRuby question. That's what we're doing. By the way, I've not used utilize JRuby, so yeah, I'm still <laughs> trying to make it work. I want to have concurrent. Uh, writing of uh, you know um, uh, uh, writing of program execution this uh, this function execution written at the same time actually maybe no nah. let me see all right I don't think this should make any difference but let's see Anything written? Nothing. Nothing. <coughs> Maybe a pen. Doesn't look like it's doing anything, man. Doesn't look like anything. Thread new launches the thread, but it runs in parallel. On the life of the thread, anybody is going to do a short term on the life of the file. File dot open closes the file. Maybe I should do thread dot each, and then join. Not thread dot join. All right. Maybe this is the issue. Yeah. Maybe. Probably because I remember I have an issue with if I didn't join the thread, didn't really spit out any result. Maybe that that's the issue. Yeah. Let's see. Next one. Fun trying to figure out stuff. <laughs> Threads dot each. All right. So we have a file, like file I/O, and in the file I/O we got like this guy thread, and we are joining all the threads here thread is and we are doing this all right let's remove i think it should solve the issue let's see maybe joining is not happening right oh okay it did try so that's good now the threads are writing good let's try this now so it did try to write something but append was not a method yeah let me make sure file 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 up append no append is not a method write is a method i think not right yeah my bad okay there we go let's try nice so a total of two seconds it took that is good that is good that is awesome let's do one more thing one last thing i'm gonna 
and we also have to do benchmarking against the other one right so sequential so we are here and we should write like num so let's say we are writing that what's the number and what is the is it a prime or not right and then we should also add like a maybe new line yeah okay that should work uh, we don't want that so now let's see what's the total time taken so it in total of two seconds it wrote it down all right and we have ah, two where did it start one second zero to ten thread dot new why it didn't try e okay so one thing which is not gonna be guaranteed in thread is when the thread is gonna thread execution is gonna be over i mean if you do want them to be sequential then of course they are not you know that's not the use case for thread but you can see the third one finished the first then we have five six then two finish then seven so one two three then we should have four five six seven eight nine and ten all of them finished awesome and the time taken was two seconds in 2.022 seconds now let's compare it with sequential writing of the data we have sequential over here let me just take this out all right and i'm gonna do the exact same thing for sequential file dot open all right uh do and let's name provided a block variable f all right and then we do this f dot write this all right okay cool so we would uh, rector did a work for me maybe okay let me try rector afterwards but all right let's focus on these two sequential and thread benchmark so again we are using jruby so ruby version jruby 9.2.14 which actually provides uh you know proper uh, multi-threading operation this uh, iqbal quran has a really good article this one and here he also mentions that let me see where he said that and it makes sense that was the problem we were having with ruby 3.2.2 because uh where was that one second yeah global interpreter lock is a mechanism used in computer language interpreters to synchronize the execution of threads so that only one thread can execute at one time but if you if you want to execute them in parallel we would probably have to, and this is what happens out of the bat so when you're using like normal uh you know simple i think for ruby 3.0.2 will also be the same case thread would be executed sequentially but when you are using jruby there would be a difference let's actually make sure this we we, we see the same pattern all right so i'm gonna change my rbn local to 3.0.0 all right and then i'm gonna execute the same file while trying while passing the flag what was the flag ruby file uh yeah git just in time compiler so now we do this it is starting to write oh so that also actually executed oh my bad so th ruby 3.0.2 also did it right off the bat oops okay what about this guy this also has the same okay so probably i was doing something wrong 
Boom. Wait a second. Okay. Yeah, this also took two seconds. One, four. All right. So yeah, Ruby 3.0.0 also supported the thread operation. Probably what I did wrong was, I think uh, this whole thread operation, I was probably I was waiting for the thread to finish and this was outside. Yeah, that was that was on my that that's what I was doing wrong. So now I put it inside and also put the hole inside a thread safe block and make sure the join happens because beforehand it, since the join was not happening properly, the results were not coming out. Alright. So let's now that we know the JIT works for thread safe for like thread operation as well let's actually measure it with a uh, sequential benchmark all right for sequential benchmark i'm gonna do okay i'm gonna just remove this out thread sync out sync actually all right cool uh after tried num and maybe we should have this guy all right let's see so the first one would be uh, multi-thread then second is sequential sequential is executing now and i'm pretty sure it's gonna take a long time i think it's gonna take around 22 second total so thread the thread file is all done it's all written out sync is still trying to write uh, so at the end of it it will let go of the lock and now it has written everything the total time taken was 22 second for the out sync so sequential uh, execution took 22 seconds of uh, overall time while thread based execution take a total of two seconds so of course in this use case we saw that the thread operation is much better right but it's not always the case i mean there are few cases where I mean you can see the difference. Let's let's run this again. If you want things to be sequentially one by one process, probably you should go for sequential, but it will take more time. So you should use a compiler which is more of a just in time compiler. But all right, let me actually make it even faster. All right, maybe it should be yeah this. All right, so this compiler is much faster. Uh, the first one is already finished I think yep this is all finished and the second one is still being written you see so the thread uh, operation is done but the synchro the uh, sequential is still being run thread is done in two seconds the only issue is for the thread operation you are not gonna have a you know sequential result you never you don't know which thread is gonna finish first so and it make actually i'm not sure why three was the first one and not one but yeah 10 should be afterwards i'm not sure about four maybe it's about square root i don't know i mean why which when which thread finish at what time I'm not sure I'll be able to answer that question, the exact reason, because if you think about it, 10 should take longer time, but there are a lot of factors, you know, in this function, like math of the square root, then which one takes the most most time? Does 10 take more time or does four? It's, it's hard to tell. I mean, we can do benchmarking, but and there are other factors as well, like what about this division and so on. But anyway, I wanted to showcase you guys a simple example right now I'm gonna do one last thing and I'm gonna go back and work on this reactor which was provided by 3.0 so although I thought 3.0.0 was not supporting multi-threading guy right off the bat it was my fault why it was not working so now I'm gonna try to make this work all right so uh, let's let's first of all get this whole thing out all right file dot open and we get rector 
let's try to see rectors or right, rector third dot and then dot uh, dot do right yeah no no dot <laughs> do f now uh, for each of the loop okay we do have to do we have to join the rectors a bit not sure not okay we can we, we will see rector new num is this we also need to file provide one more data which is file then we don't need this we don't need this f dot write is prime f dot write is prime yeah and uh, then we can move it here file dot open do f yeah zero to ten rector dot new num all these three so what i'm doing here is i am taking in all the uh, variables from outside scope and passing in passing them as block variable so uh, let's see let's see one more time what happens here for that reason i'm gonna try to not let these two guys work let's see what happens with the rector rector is experimental blah 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 so it's it's it has not written yet still writing it took 22 seconds it did write everything and it okay it didn't execute it sequentially although it took a very long time so like from my understanding either rector is not performing the best or i'm doing something wrong with rector execution <laughs> all right but okay we can see let's run all of these guys at the same time and we can compare their execution all right i'm gonna delete all of these guys all right let's delete all these files and we will see which one is the first one to finish actually i'm gonna put the thread you know what I'm just thinking <laughs> I can ex call these are inside threads as well but no I don't want to do that <laughs> all right just in time compiler <laughs> it's executing the thread it finished in two seconds and here we have all the data available this guy sequential is still trying to log right so it has a lock on out sync .txt file so yeah it's still writing 22 seconds so now it's all finished out sync 22 seconds it all printed out in synchronous manner sequential manner now rector is still writing it and rector is a new again if you didn't see rector is a new uh, co experimental concept launched in ruby 3.0.0 so rector is an actor model like concurrent you can make multiple writer uh, the famous small program blah 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 benchmark blah. but yeah from my understanding rector and sequential scan took the same time let me see if i'm doing everything right one more time for rector and then we can call it a day and we'll know that all right thread if you the thread benchmark actually uh, was better and it also it worked in ruby 3.0.0 it worked in for jruby as well all right now i think this is also for jruby this syntax is not gonna work all right because this syntax uh again the name i'm forgetting the name again again <laughs> the endless it's called what is it? endless method definition yeah this method definition is not gonna work with uh, ruby jruby uh, compiler all right so it 
Rector also wrote in sequential. Thread wrote it unsequentially. And this wrote it sequential. One more time I'm gonna do make sure the thread rector.new now. Yeah, I think it's all right. By the way, we use this module, which is provided by Ruby benchmark to measure all of these. We added required benchmark at the top of the file. Right. Rector. Let's see. By the way, Rector is still experimental. So we Yeah, I mean, they don't say like Rector, this block will run in parallel with other Rectors. That's what I do. That's what I did. Right? Rector.new. Do. Yeah. But it looks like all the Rector ran, uh, ran in the same manner. So, yeah, not sure. But yeah, we were able to prove that this thread benchmark, like, finished in within two seconds so if in ruby also programs if you you know if you want if sequentialism is not important if you don't want sequential results you just want data to be available and maybe at the end we can do sorting or something like that then try using you know threads okay the simple thread the primary the 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 uh, sim Primitive thread, which I'm using right here, primitive thread type in Ruby would be good enough to help you execute your operation. It's the same th way Sidekick, which if you have used, uh, yeah, Sidekick, they also do the same thing. Use threads uh, provided by your configuration file in a Rails application or a Sinatra application. They provide uh, they use thread to execute different ex different programs at the same times so yeah i think uh, i'm gonna take a break it's uh, around 11 in the night i am thankful uh, that you guys join especially ed Pearl. yeah you should try threads it's uh, it's fun actually and you can uh write you can improve the performance of some of your programs go back you know at you at your at your work and be like you know what i could do these in more thread fashion but remember thread are not the, like ruby 3.0.0 compiler is not the best suited for rails currently maybe they would handle that problem in ruby 3.1 version but if you try to use ruby 3.0.0 and you try to use thread operations or rectors in rails it might not be the best but for normal primitive thread types in Ruby. I think, yeah, you should try it. All right, so thanks for joining. I really appreciate you guys. All right, I'll try. Uh, as Ed was saying, maybe I should actually try to get back to the Help Me Rent app. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Uh, I will be online. I'll be appearing again next uh, Sunday.